So cost of debt is the cost of debt financing to a company when it issues a bond or takes out a loan. There are two methods of estimating cost of debt. One is the yield to maturity approach and other is the debt rating approach. So let's talk about the yield to maturity approach first. The yield to maturity is the annual return that an investor earns on a bond today assuming that he holds the bond till maturity. So let's take a simple example. Let's say that a company issues a bond and this is a tie in both with quant as well as material that you saw in FRA in the reading on non-current liabilities. So essentially we are figuring out what is the return that a company needs to provide its bondholders. So if a company issues a bond, let's say that a company issues a, a five year 10% semi-annual bond and let's say that the par value is equal to 1000 and let's say that the issue price was equal to 950. So this is a discount bond because the issue price is less than par and so if you if you recall your FRA lesson the the interest rate of ITM is going to be more than 10%. To figure out the exact number you need to pull out your calculators and let's just quickly see the cash flow here. So at time zero, the company, uh, or let's let's look at it from an investor perspective. So investor pays up 950, and now what will the investor get? So in this case, since we have five years and semi-annual, we'll have 26 month periods. So one, two, all the way to, uh, I'm sorry, so five year, semi-annual so we actually have 10 periods and what is the coupon payment that the investor will get every six months remember this period is six months so the interest payment that he will get every six months is five percent of thousand so five percent of thousand is equal to 50 so he'll get 50 50 and so on and as at maturity the investor will get 50 plus he'll get par value back. Hopefully this should be very familiar. And to calculate the YTM, we first calculate the six month yield. So that six month yield, you basically calculate using your, your calculator. So plug in N is equal to 10. Your PV is equal to minus 950 your payment is equal to 50 fv is equal to 1000 and you have to compute the interest rate this interest rate that you compute will be the six month interest rate and then you simply multiply it by two to come up with the annual rd so you can you can do the calculation i'm pulling up my calculator and doing the same right now so let's get into the tvm mode so you should get an interest rate of 5.67 and to come up with your cost of debt you need to do 5.67 multiplied by 2 which is 11.34 percent so as you can expect since this is a discount bond the interest rate is going to be higher than the coupon rate and if you get this answer that is what you use as the pre-tax rate for your VAC formula okay another approach is called the debt rating approach when a reliable current market price for a company's debt is not available, so that's the 950 figure in our previous uh, slide, then the debt rating approach can be used to estimate the before tax cost of debt. So what the analyst can do is use the rating and maturity of the firm's existing debt to estimate the before tax cost of debt. So what you can say is, let's say that the rating on your company's debt is currently double A B 
and you can see that in the market other bonds with the similar rating and similar maturity have a cost of debt equal to 15 percent then as a proxy you can use 15 percent for your cost of debt now let's talk about the cost of preferred stock generally speaking with preferred stock there is a common dividend that stays or there is a dividend preferred dividend that remains constant and let's say that you have a situation where you have preferred stock with par value equal to 50 which pays a dividend of 10 percent so what this is saying is that the actual dividend value so the preferred dividend is 10 percent of par value which is equal to 5 so this is our cash flow let's say that our up preferred stock is trading at 45 so the dividend is 5 every year and let's say that the preferred stock is currently trading at 45 then the way we come up with the cost of preferred dividend it's equal to the annual payment which is 5 divided by 45 which is equal to 11 point so this is equal to 11 point so 11.11 percent so it's a simple calculation and if you recall this is based on the annuity formula where you have a very simple cash flow of 555 five, five forever so this is an annuity and the way you figure out the present value of an annuity so in this case the present value of this annuity would be the market price or the stock so the present value is equal to the uh, the annuity cash flow which is 5 divided by the the rate that we are using or the interest rate and from this formula you can simply derive that r is equal to 5 over p if p is given as it was in our case this was 45 that's how we come up with this formula so very straightforward okay cost of common equity and this is extremely significant because you will see this concept again in portfolio management and then you'll see it again in equity so if you understand this well now then you are in good shape so cost of equity we de generally denote this as as r e so cost of equity is the rate of return required by a company's common shareholders. A company may increase equity through the reinvestment of earnings, so that's retained earnings, or through the issuance of new shares of stock. The estimation of common equity is challenging because of the uncertain nature of future cash flows in terms of amount and timing. So this is just a good to know even though at CFA level 1 uh, we are given the data so we don't encounter this challenge but in the real world obviously we have issues. Now how do we calculate RE? There are three methods. Number one CAPM, Capital Asset Pricing Model. Uh, so the next one is the Dividend Discount Model and so this is cap m and the third is the bond yield plus risk premium method you need to know all three very well so let's get into it one of the most important formulas in finance is given right here and this is your capital asset pricing model so essentially the four steps here are as follows uh, the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate so obviously step one is to figure out what the risk-free rate is in your economy let's take the Pakistan example so risk-free rate here is about 13 percent and remember the risk-free rate has inflation built in so whenever we quote a risk-free rate it is the nominal rate which is uh, the rate on government bonds and in Pakistan that's roughly 13% right now plus beta 
this beta represents the riskiness of common equity and we'll talk about this in a little more detail uh, later but the basic idea is this beta is a measure of how a given stock moves with the market so for example for if the market is going up by 2% and let's say that this common equity then also generally goes up by 2% and if the market is down by 2% then the stock generally also goes down by 2%. So if essentially this stock has the same, uh, roughly the same as it moves up and down with the market, then we say that beta is equal to 1. So in other words, market beta is 1. And if a given stock moves up and down with the market, then that stock has a beta of 1. A risky stock which has, say, a beta of 2, means the following. This means that if the market generally is going up by 2%, then the stock goes up by 4% and the risk comes in on the downside where if the market goes down by 2%, then the stock goes down by 4%. So this is the general idea behind, uh, behind beta. So let's take a simple case where we have a stock with a beta of 2. So this is a relatively risky stock as depicted here. So that's step number 2, figuring out the beta. And then step 3 is figuring out the risk premium or sometimes called the market risk premium. The market risk premium is equal to the expected return on the market. So in Pakistan's context, this would be the expected return that you would get if you invested in the Karachi Stock Exchange. Let's say that you bought a index fund based on the KSC 100. Let's say that the expected return there is 19% minus the risk-free rate, which is uh, 13%. So in Pakistan's context, the approximate uh, market risk premium is 6%. So if you are discounting a stock which has a beta of 2, then the required return on equity would be 13% plus 2 times 6, which is 12%. So this would be equal to 25%. A high number, but that is expected given that we have a high discount rate, high risk-free rate and and uh, and a relatively high market risk premium another interpretation of this market risk premium so the market risk premium of 6% this is the additional return that equity investors demand for taking the risk of investing in the stock market uh, in other words in, by investing in risk-free government bonds, an investor could get 13%. By taking the additional risk of investing in the stock market, investors require an additional return of 6%. Okay, in your final, in your in your exam, you might have questions that either give you the expected return of the market and the risk-free rate, or at times you are simply given the risk premium, which in this case is 6%. So read the words very carefully. The second model that you need to know is the dividend discount model. And this again is based on present value of cash flows. So I'll first give you a simple scenario which ties in with material that you saw in quant. So let's say that you have a cash flow which is a growing perpetuity. So what's a growing perpetuity? A growing perpetuity means that let's say that you have a cash flow of 1 that you get at the end of period 1 and let's say that this is growing at a rate of 2% and let's say that our required rate of return is 10%. Then the present value of a growing perpetuity is equal to cash flow 1 so cash flow 1 divided by discount rate minus G, which is the growth rate. So in my simple example, cash flow 1, which is the cash flow at the end of period 1, is 1, divided by the discount rate 
which is 10%, so that is 0 0.1, minus the growth rate, which is 2%, so that is 0 0.02. So the present value will be 1 divided by 0.8. So this is actually 1 divided by 0 0.08. So 1 divided by 0 0.08 is equal to, to uh, so this is equal to 12.5. So we are saying that the present value is equal to 12.5 for this cash flow. Now in the context of a dividend paying stock, the the formula changes as in it's essentially the same formula instead of cf1 we simply write this as d1 or dividend one so the present value for a dividend paying stock is the dividend that you expect at the end of period one divided by r minus g notice that we do not use the dividend at time zero in many questions you'll see this referred to as the dividend that was just paid out so you need to figure out what's D1, which will either be given to you, or if you are given D0, then you increase it by 10% to get D1. So the price of a share at time zero then is this formula, D1 over the cost of equity minus G. But if you, are, if you know the price of the share and you want to find R, then you simply rewrite this equation in terms of R, so using some simple algebra, you can see that the cost of equity is equal to D1 over the current market price plus the growth rate. So given the expected dividend at the end of period one, given the current price and given the expected growth rate, you can find the cost of equity. Now, how do you find the growth rate? The approximate formula for growth rate is the retention rate retention rate is the percentage of earnings that are retained so let's say that a given company retains 60 percent of its earnings so the retention rate would be 0 0.6 multiplied by return on equity so remember return on equity is your net income divided by equity so let's say that the return on equity for a given company is 20 percent then in this case the growth rate is going to be 0 0.6 into 20 which is 12 percent so so you need to know these formulas given a problem where you are shown the payout ratio a payout ratio is the percentage of earnings that are paid out so to calculate the retention ratio you simply do the 1 minus payout ratio multiply that by roe the logic for this formula is straightforward. As you can imagine, if you have two companies that are equal in all respects, one company retains more of its earnings and invests those earnings in the company, clearly that company will grow faster. So that's why there is a positive relationship between growth and retention rate. Uh, also, a company that has a higher return on equity will grow faster and that there again you see a positive relationship between growth and return on equity so make sure you understand this formula uh, for growth and make sure you understand this formula for calculating re uh, given dividend uh, price per share and growth rate and uh, there are several practice questions in the curriculum as well as in i'm sure in your study notes make sure you do those because this is a, a guaranteed question on your exam bond yield plus risk premium approach so this is the third approach and it's very simple you simply add a risk premium to the market yield on the firm's long-term debt suppose company d's interest rate on long-term debt is 10 percent the risk premium is estimated to be 5%, then the cost of equity is simply 10% plus 5%. Now notice this 5% is different from the market risk premium that we talked about earlier. This is the risk premium for a given company over for a given company's common stock over that company's bond. So here you simply add these two and come up with 15%.